Welcome to Marine Gurukul video series. We are pleased to present this video in which we shall try to learn and understand few terms that are used to describe the ship's principal dimensions. In this video, we shall try to understand, illustrate, and define the forward perpendicular of the ship, after perpendicular, length between the perpendiculars, length on the water line, length overall, baseline, depth both extreme and bolded, breadth both extreme and bolded, and lastly the draft both extreme and molded draft. Forward perpendicular is a perpendicular drawn to the water line at a point where the forward side of the stem meets the designed load water line. What is the designed load water line? It is the water line at the ship's summer draft. Let's show it on a diagram. Here is the profile view of the ship. We have already learnt in one of the earlier videos that this is the stem of the ship where we had discussed the rake of the stem. This is the summer water line of the vessel which has now come up on the diagram. This is the summer draft water line or summer load water line. Now where is it this summer load water line meeting the forwardmost part of the stem? Let's mark that here and you can see that is coming up with this red dot out here. That means this is the point where it is meeting the forward part of the stem. Now at this point when we draw a perpendicular to the water line which is shown by this red line it is right at the forward end of the stem where this load uh, summer draft water line meets the cuts the stem this perpendicular is what is called as the forward perpendicular of the ship after perpendicular is a perpendicular drawn to the water line so it's again perpendicular to the water line where is it drawn it is drawn through the after side or after edge of the rudder post in ships where there is, may not be a rudder post it is drawn through the center of the rudder stock now what is a rudder post we'll discuss it in more details when we study about the stern frame but it's a vertical member of the stern frame where the rudder is hung. That is what is rudder post. What is rudder stock? Rudder stock is again a vertical member to which rudder is attached and this rudder stock goes and gets connected to the steering gear. So if there is a rudder post, then the after perpendicular is drawn through the after side or after end of the rudder post. If there is no rudder post, this is drawn through the center of the rudder stock. Let's have a look, uh, draw it in a diagram. We have the same profile view in which forward perpendicular is already marked. In this diagram, we have shown that the rudder, uh, uh, rudder with the rudder stock. So we'll draw a perpendicular to the water line through the center of this rudder stock. You can see this red vertical line coming up here. This is the after perpendicular of the ship. What do we use the after perpendicular for? After perpendicular is the reference for giving us the longitudinal location of say center of buoyancy, center of flotation. That means certain hydrostatic particulars, their longitudinal location in the hydrostatic tables is given with respect to the after perpendicular. So after perpendicular becomes the reference for such hydrostatic particulars. Amidships also used as midships. So please do not get confused between amidships and midships. These terms are interchangeably used during the course of discussion. So what is amidships? Amidships means something which is in the center or in the middle. However, in context of the ongoing discussion, amidships is something or the point which is midway between the forward perpendicular and after perpendicular. 
so what is what the definition that we are seeing on the screen now is in context of the ongoing discussion so amidships or midships is midway between the forward perpendicular and after perpendicular let's see the profile view of the ship both the perpendiculars are already marked here and midway between these two somewhere here this line represents amidships or midships and it's represented by this symbol uh, in the earlier times the hydrostatic particulars were given with respect to amidships but in that case it became important to mention whether they are forward or aft now to remove that ambiguity the modern day hydrostatic particulars are given from after perpendicular and not from amidships length between the perpendiculars having defined both the perpendiculars forward and aft obviously the length between the two is the length between the perpendiculars we can have the same profile view in which both the perpendiculars are marked and the length of the ship between these two perpendiculars indicated by this green line which has just come up is the lbp of the ship now this lbp helps in su to some extent standardize in standardizing the length measurement of the ship why because the ships at the bow and stern depending on their form could have unusual overhang in terms of rake of the bow or the form of the stern so to basically and these these overhangs may not actually contribute to the useful space within the ship so to remove the effect of such overhangs in measurement measuring the useful length of the ship the lbp is taken into account whenever length is the criteria for application of any rule so if a rule is applied basis the length of the ship then it is the lbp of the ships that is taken into account length of the ship on the waterline abbreviated as lwl at any draft which at which the ship may be floating the length of the vessel along the waterline from the forwardmost extremity of the ship along that waterline to the aftermost extremity at that waterline that length of the ship is called as length on the waterline obviously the lwl would depend on the draft of the ship it will change with the draft now as the lwl varies with the draft unless the draft of lwl is specified in the absence of draft being mentioned lwl shall be taken to have been measured at the summer draft water line of the vessel so if somebody says what is the lwl of the ship that means what is implied is the lwl at the ship's summer draft water line we can see this profile view of the ship we also have the summer load water line here let's mark the forwardmost extremity and the aftermost extremity along the water line the forwardmost extremity at the stem is already marked when we drew the for forward perpendicular let's mark the aftermost extremity along the water line you can see this red dot coming here which is the aftermost extremity of the ship along the water line now if we draw vertical here then the distance between this red line drawn here and this red line which is representing the forward perpendicular in this case this length marked out here this one is the lwl of the ship lwl is significant in determining some of the properties of the vessel so that is the significance of lwl or use of lwl like it has an impact on the hull speed if we need to calculate the bottom uh, the paint required for uh, for the underwater hull of the ship then lwl is taken into account so these are the some of the examples where lwl may be useful length overall abbreviated as loa is the length from the forwardmost extremity of the ship at whichever level it may be to the aftermost extremity of the ship at whatever level it may be 
So this is the extreme length of the vessel. So LOA is the length of the ship between the forwardmost and the aftermost points on the hull, but measured. So the two extremities, these two points may not be in the, at the same horizontal level. So the distance between them has to be measured in the horizontal plane that is parallel to the water line. So LOA is the length of the ship between the forwardmost and the aftermost point of the hull measured parallel to the water line. What is the significance of LOA? Since it's the extreme length, it is important from the perspective of safe maneuvering of the vessel and also safe docking of the ship. So LOA is significant or important for safe maneuvering and safe docking of the vessel. We can see this profile view. Let's mark out the forward most extreme point in this case. In this case, that happens to be right on top here. The blue dot coming up here represents the forward extremity of the vessel. Let's mark the after extremity of the ship. Now that comes here with another blue line. We have drawn a perpendicular here at the forward extremity. We draw another perpendicular, this blue line at the after extremity. And the length between these two blue lines coming up on the screen here is the length overall of the vessel. So in this diagram, what all can we see? We can see the forward perpendicular, after perpendicular, amidships, summer load water line, LBP, LWA, and LOA. This line is a datum or a reference from where all the vertical molded dimensions or the molded heights of different points on the hull are measured. What are molded dimensions? Molded dimensions are the ones in which the thickness of the plating is not taken into account. That means they are measured from the inner side of the plating. When we include the thickness of the plating and measure from the outer side of the plating to outer side of the plating, those dimensions are referred to as extreme dimensions. So please remember, extreme dimensions include the thickness of the plating. Molded dimensions do not include the thickness of the plating. So baseline is a datum for measuring the vertical molded dimensions. That is the height of points on the hull. It is a horizontal line. And how do we define the horizontal? Parallel to the water surface where at the top of the keel plate so that means the thickness of the keel plate is not taken into account it's drawn in the horizontal plane on the top of the keel plate it may be used both in the longitudinal direction in longitudinal reference that is fore and aft or this baseline may be drawn in the fore and aft direction need based or it may be drawn in the athwart ship direction running from port to starboard. How do we draw the baseline? Let's first learn how drawing of the baseline in the longitudinal direction, fore and aft baseline. Now, there could be two scenarios. We may have a vessel with horizontal keel. That means zero rake of the keel. As you can see in this diagram, it has no rake of the keel. It's a horizontal keel. In this case, it's very simple. Through the upper edge of the keel plating, we draw our fore and aft line, which is parallel to the water line because water line will defi define the horizontal. So here is the water line coming up to define the horizontal. Parallel to this, we draw through the upper edge of the keel. And this red line in this case, you can see is the baseline. So in this case, it's very simple. The other case could be we have a vessel with rake of the keel. In this diagram, we have drawn a stern raked keel. You can see it is stern raked. In such cases, we'll identify the lowest point of the keel, which is the lowest point of the keel here. And through the upper edge of the keel at the lowest point, I repeat, through the upper edge of the keel at the lowest point of the keel, will draw the horizontal. 
again horizontal will be parallel to the water line so water line comes up and through the upper edge of the keel here where my pointer is we draw this red line which has come up and this red line represents the baseline the idea of drawing through the lowest point i'm sure you'll agree so that all the points of the hull molded points of the hull are above the baseline and there is nothing of the no part of the molded hull is below the baseline in that case draw a baseline in the transverse direction that is a thwart shape direction we draw it at the top of the keel at the station along the length where we want to draw it see unlike the baseline in the longitudinal direction which was one for the entire ship if we need to draw a baseline in the athwart ship direction that shall apply only for that particular station along the length where the baseline is drawn so for at different stations along the length of the ship we'll have different baselines that could be drawn in the athwart ship direction now these baselines athwart ship baselines they are required for measuring the vertical molded dimensions only at that station not for complete ship not applicable to the whole ship but they will be applicable only for that particular station where the baseline is drawn the baseline in athwart ship plane is the datum for vertical measurements at the concerned station along the length for example if i want to measure the draft of the ship we all know draft of the ship could be different at different points along the length of the vessel so if i have to measure a molded draft then that molded draft at that point will be measured from this athwart ship baseline that will be drawn at that particular station how do we draw the baseline athwart ship baseline again there can be two types of keels one keel could be a horizontal keel with no rise of floor when there is no rise of floor as in this diagram it's very simple we have the water line to define the horizontal and through the upper edge of the keel we draw the line parallel to the water line and this is the baseline there could be another scenario in which we have rise of floor of the keel which is in the transverse direction we have already learned in one of the earlier videos now when there is a rise of floor again we'll identify the lowest point in this transverse direction in this transverse direction the lowest point is here of the keel now at the lowest point of the keel we go to the upper edge of the upper surface of the keel and at this point where you see the pointer which is the upper surface of the keel at the lowest point of the keel we draw a horizontal line parallel to the water line and this becomes the base line in this particular case and obviously as said earlier the transverse or athwart ship base line will be applicable only for the location or the station along the length where it has been drawn extreme and molded depth now based on our earlier videos we can appreciate that because of the varying form of the keel due to the keel rake and the varying deck form due to shear the depth of the vessel could be different at different points along the length so one is depth at any point along the length that could be different because of uh, keel rake and the shear of the deck however when somebody says what is the depth of the ship as its principal dimension it is implied that we are talking of depth amidships so depth as a principal dimension of the vessel will be the depth amidships extreme depth in that case would be then what is it it will be measured amidships it will be measured on the ship side and it will be measured from the lowest point of the keel amidships to the upper edge of the deck plating on the ship side so key, the lowest point of the keel is only amidship cross sectional lowest point not the entire length and as far as the upper edge of the deck plating is concerned not over the entire deck only at the sides let's see it in this diagram 
we have cross sectional area of the vessel amidships so it's midship cross sectional area we have deliberately chosen a vessel with rise of floor and also the camber of the deck so to measure the extreme depth we identify the lowest point of the keel amidships and not along the entire length lowest point of the keel amidship is this one the outer edge here and we draw a horizontal line this red line coming up here at the lowest point of the keel amidships then we identify the upper edge of the deck on the ship side upper edge of the deck on the ship side is here and here we draw a horizontal line through those two points because of the camber you can see some part of the deck is above this red line now mind we are talking of the upper edge on the sides the depth of the vessel between these two red lines is the extreme or extreme depth what whichever way you want to call it now if you want molded depth it shall again be measured amidships it shall be measured on the ship side but the reference from where it would be measured would be now the baseline amidships and we have just learned how to draw the upward ship baseline so baseline amidships will be drawn through the upper surface of the lowest part of the keel which will be here so this green line i'm sure you'll agree based on our earlier discussion is the baseline amidships and we draw another line this time through the lower edge or the heel of the deck plating on the sides that means this is the lower edge of the deck plating on the sides we draw a line through them so the thickness of the keel has been left out because of the baseline and the thickness of the plating has also been left out because of this lower edge line and the depth of the vessel between these two green lines is the molded depth of the ship extreme breadth of the ship also referred to as extreme beam and the molded breadth or the molded beam extreme breadth or extreme beam or extreme width of the ship is the greatest distance between the two sides of the ship at the greatest width wherever may be the along the entire length wherever you have the maximum breadth that shall be the extreme breadth of the ship measured from outside of the ship side plating to the outside of the ship side plating of course usually it will be amidships but if it is not amidships in a awkwardly shaped vessel then it will be measured at that point so extreme breadth will be measured where the breadth is maximum though by default usually it is amidships it's measured between the outer edges of the side shell plating as you can appreciate in this diagram which has come up this is the cross sectional view of the station where the vessel has the maximum breadth we measure from the outer side of this shell plating outer side of this shell plating and the breadth between these two red lines is the breadth extreme we have to talk about uh, the molded breadth or molded beam obviously we leave out the thickness of the side shell plating it shall be from the inner side of the side shell plating here represented by the green line to the inner side of the side shell plating on this side and beam or the breadth between these two green lines is the molded breadth draft extreme and draft molded now draft we know is the distance between the keel and the water line at any point along the length now the draft of the ship can vary along its length because of a because of the rake of the keel if it is there and two if the vessel is trimmed then obviously the draft at different points could be different now extreme draft at any point is the distance between the outer edge of the keel because it's extreme so the thickness of the keel, keel plating has to be included so it's the distance between the outer edge of the keel plating and the water line at any point along the length of the ship we can have this diagram here we have the cross sectional view of the station where we are, want to have the draft we have the camber and we have rise of floor so we find out the lowest extremity of the keel plating and we draw this line here parallel to the water line this red line we can see coming up here 
and its distance from the water line its depth below the water line will be the extreme draft at the station for which this cross sectional area has been drawn molded draft will basically exclude the thickness of the keel plating that means at this station we'll draw a baseline which will be drawn through the upper edge of the keel here the green line and from this green line to the water line this distance would be the draft molded the green line is the baseline this is the molded draft where at the point for which this cross sectional area of the ship has been drawn when we say only the draft it will always be extreme draft because it is pertaining to the safety of the ship uh, the depth in which the ship has to navigate so when we say only draft it will be extreme draft by default if we have to talk about the molded draft it has to be explicitly stated now we come to end of this video hope you find this video useful please do share your comments through the comment section in the youtube channel or feel free to write to us or email us on marinegurukul at gmail.com thank you very much for liking appreciating our effort and watching marine gurukul video series thank you very much